Welcome to Lesson 3 on Plant Reproduction. Starting with SC6, describe the parts and function of a flower. So you're going to be filling out this grid here with the function of each of the parts of the flower. Now, we're going to do this in two ways. First of all, you're going to watch this video. It's really for younger kids and it's quite kind of cheesy, but it still gets some really important information across. So once you've watched that, then I'm going to also go through it as well. So can you make sure that you pause here and watch the video? The link is both in your booklet and on Shobi, so you can just click it straight from Shobi. Okay, so hopefully you got a lot of your grid filled out there with the function of each part of the flower, but I'm also going to go through all the different parts of the flower as well. Before we start talking about the different parts of the flower, it's important to remember that the flower is the reproductive organ of the plant. It is the reproductive organ of the plant. So let's start by talking about the petals of the flower and their function. You will have noticed that flower petals come in many different shapes and colours. The reason that they are so colourful is to attract pollinators. So the function of the petals of the flower is attracting pollinators. Pollinators include many different insects, for example bees. They also include a number of different bird species, for example hummingbirds. There are a few other animals that also are pollinators. So we're going to start with the female parts of the plant and the first thing we're going to talk about is the stigma and its function. So you can see the stigma here, it's the little blob on the end there. So again you can see it in the context of the whole flower here. So the stigma, um, and this is on a real one, the stigma is at the end of a kind of long stalk called the style. And you can see here that it looks a bit sticky and it is. And the reason the stigma is sticky is because its function is to stick to any pollen that gets brought its way. So the style is another female part of the plant and if you look at the diagram here it's just really holding up the stigma and um, the reason that it kind of sticks out is so that the stigma sticks out as far as possible and that way it's more likely to be able to catch pollen. Moving on to another female part of the flower, the ovary. So if you look at the left hand side, you can see the stigma style and the style leads down to the ovary at the base of the flower. Now the ovary, you can see it highlighted here in purple. So it's just at the base of the style. Now inside the ovary, you can see something called the ovules, which we'll talk about in a minute. So the job of the ovary is to produce the ovules. So the ovary's whole job is to make, produce the ovules. What are the ovules? Well, they're the equivalent of a um, egg cell in humans. So the job of the ovule is they are the female sex cell, also known as the female gamete, and they will go on to be fertilized and form a seed. Here you can see some real ovules there. So it is worth noting, um, although I have filled this bit in for you on the um, grid you have to fill in, that the female part of the plant overall is called the pistil. Now you can see on the left here the pistil, and it is made up of the stigma, style and ovary. And obviously the ovary contains the ovules. So there are three kind of parts to the female pistil in the flower. Now before we move on, I'd like you to pause, check you've filled out all of the different functions for the female parts of the flower, and then we're going to mark those bits before we move on to the male part of the flower. So could you pause here, check you've done it, and then mark. Okay, so you're going to pause on the picture in a minute so that you can compare your answers to mine. You don't have to have written the same thing, but you do need obviously the same main details. If you're missing anything, just add it on when you mark it. 
So we're now going to move on to the male part of the flower, which is known as the stamen. You can see the stamen here on the right hand side and it is made up of two parts. Let's start with the anther. You can see the anther located on the right hand side here. It's on top of what we call the filament, which we'll go into later. The anther sticks out just like the stigma does. You can see a real anther on this flower here. The anther sticks out because the anther's job is to produce pollen. It wants this pollen to either be blown by the wind or collected by pollinators so it can get to other flowers. The filament, which you can see on this diagram here on the right hand side, simply holds up the anther. It holds it nice and far out of the flower so that it's more likely that the pollen will get spread. Though you don't have to fill anything into your table for this, it's a good idea for you to understand what pollen is. Pollen is the male sex cell or gamete of a plant. So it is used to fertilize the ovule. And that's the male part of the flower complete, the stamen. So I would like you to pause the video here, make sure you've written the function of each of those two parts in because we will be marking that part of the grid or table next. So you'll need to pause on the next picture so you can read through the answers and compare them to your own. If you're missing any details, just add them on. Okay, so our last thing that we're going to do is we're going to move on to parts of the flower that are neither male nor female, just like the petals aren't male or female. And we're going to be starting with the flower stalk. The flower stalk is as simple as it sounds, it's just the stalk that the flower grows from. Um, so you can see it labelled here as stalk. The next part of the flower we're going to look at is the nectary. You can see the nectary labelled on the bottom right hand side on this diagram here. Now the reason that all pollinators like bees and some mammals and birds, the reason that they go to flowers is not to get the pollen, it's actually to get the nectar. So nectar is basically a really sugary, sugary fluid. Um, a bit like honey and that's what bees make their honey from um, and the reason nectar is so sugary is to attract these animals uh, and they use it as their food source so um, the flower nectary its whole job is to produce nectar the last structure we're going to look at is the or are the sepals now you can see them labeled here near the bottom right hand side and you can see them labelled here as well. So the sepals are the green parts that basically protect the flower bud as it's growing. And then as it opens up, they open up to let the petals unfold. It's now time to pause the video so you can make sure you've filled in all of the information for the last three structures. Okay, so if you pause on the next picture so that you can read the information, and if you've missed anything, then just add it on. Moving on, we're going to label the parts of a flower. I'd like you to have a go at this on your own. See if you can work out where any of them go. So you can use the labels from the table and see if you can add any on, okay? So pause the video now and have a go at that. Okay, so hopefully you managed to get at least a couple of them labelled on, but here are all of the labels. So you might want to pause on this picture and just check what you've got and add on any that you missed or correct any you got wrong. So make sure that you do not move on unless you have completed all the activities in that SC. So we're moving on to SC7, describe how plants are pollinated. So you have some multiple choice questions to answer, and then you have a couple of thinking questions to answer. So with the multiple choice questions, question number four, you need to completely ignore because I don't even know what I was writing there. It's just complete nonsense, that question. So please just ignore question number four and we'll do the multiple choice questions now. Okay, so I'm um, sorry. I had to film this on my computer screen, um, so the quality isn't amazing, but it was the only way I could work out how to get this file to work. 
So um, we're going to look at how pollination actually occurs. And of course, there is wind pollination. So flowers that produce pollen that's just carried by the wind. But we're going to look at an example with a, um, a bee, an insect pollinator. Um, but the principles are all the same. So our insect is attracted to the flower by its colourful petals and also by the smell of nectar as well. So it flies over to our flower and it's in there to collect the nectar. But whilst it's collecting the nectar, lots of pollen will get stuck to it. Um, and then it, once it's collected as much nectar as it can, it will fly off to find another flower. Once it finds another flower, it's going back to collect nectar from that flower too. However, it will have pollen that was stuck to it from the last flower on it still. Now that pollen may well then get stuck to the stigma, which remember is at the end of the style. It may well get stuck to the stigma of this new flower, okay? So if that happens, then the next part of the process is this pollen, which is at the top of the stigma, it needs to get down here to the ovule, okay, which is inside of the ovary. So remember, the pollen is the male sex cell, the male gamete, and then the ovule is the female gamete or sex cell. So they need to join together, just like a sperm and an egg need to join together. So how does it do that? Because it's got to get all the way down the style, through the ovary and into here. Well, what it does is it actually creates a tube. It causes a tube to form and it just goes down that tube and into the ovule. Once it's got to the ovule, the two things fuse together. So the ovule and the um, pollen fuse together to create a fertilized cell. And that fertilized cell will then go on to turn into a seed. The ovary around the seed, the fertilized cell, so the ovary which is round it, is what will go on to make the fruit of the plant. So that will go on to make the fruit. So remember to pause your video here so that you can check you've got all of your answers. Remember there is no answer for question four. And now we're going to mark our answers so if you pause on the next picture and then you can just check that you've got the right answers. So only move on once you have marked your answers, please. So you're now gonna do questions six, seven and eight. Now six and seven are thinking questions and eight is gonna require you to do some research on the internet, but it's very easy research. So you're gonna to need to make sure you look at the actual diagrams that you're meant to be comparing. And if you get really stuck on the thinking part, the answers can be found in the summary notes. You can see them here, which are at the back of the booklet, okay? So I'd like you to pause here and just do your best to answer these questions as well as you can. So we're going to be missing out SC8 for the moment, which is the flower dissection, because I've asked you to get hold of your flowers for next week. So we'll do those first lesson next week which means that we're going to be moving on to SC9, seed dispersal. Um, and in SC9, we're going to be labeling a diagram of a seed, and we're going to be answering a couple of questions about the function of each part of a seed. So the three parts of a seed that you need to know about are the embryo, the food store, and the seed coat. So let's look at the function of each of those three things. The embryo of the seed is the part of the seed that will go on to grow into a new plant. The embryo will not start growing until the seed has been watered. We call the process of a seed starting to grow germination. During the early stages of seed germination, the embryo needs a food store in order to grow. This is because the embryo cannot make its own food. Plants normally have leaves and absorb sunlight and photosynthesize. This is how they make the food that they need to grow. But the early embryo doesn't have any leaves and so cannot do this process of photosynthesis. 
therefore it requires a food store. So let's look at the function of the seed coat finally. So you can see the seed coat here um, and it is around the embryo because its job is to protect the embryo. So it protects the embryo from drying out. It also protects the embryo from adverse weather such as snow. And lastly, it protects the embryo from being digested. So many animals, lots of birds and mammals and so on, eat fruit as a source of food. When they eat the fruit, they often swallow the seeds as well. When they swallow the seed, if the seed didn't have the seed coat, it would then just be digested by the stomach. However, the seed coat pre prevents this from happening. This means that the seed just gets pooed out the other end, which is actually brilliant for the plant because the poo or feces is full of nutrients. Um, and also the animal will probably have gone a long way away from where the mother plant originally was. This means that the seeds get dispersed by the animal and they get planted in a nice little package of its own fertilizer or poo. Pause here and make sure you've filled out all of the answers and labeled your diagram. We're now going to mark these, so if you would pause on the next picture, you can check the answers and mark your own. Remember to add in anything that you missed out. So don't move on unless you have marked your answers. So we're going to move on to the very last task, which is SC10, and it's also on seed dispersal. So your task is going to be to fill in this grid here. So you have a space to draw a diagram for each of the methods of seed dispersal and a space to write a short description. There's also a bigger space for a kind of title, as it were. So in order to get this right, you need to really carefully read the instructions. There's also a link that you're going to need in order to do your research. I'll add this link to Shobi as well. If you want to do more research than that website, that's absolutely fine. Last of all, I'd add, I've added this picture here to help you, inspire you uh, with pictures that you can add. You can also copy these completely or you can do your own research once again. So you need to pause here while you complete SC10. Lastly, you need to upload your work that you've just done for SC10 to this lesson on Shobi. And well done, you have completed lesson three.